Okay. Uh, we're going to draw the CFT, but first for fun, let's name it. Sodium space tetracyano uh, bare eight three. Okay. All right. That's just for fun. Now let's do the problem. We're going to draw the CFT. This could be, unfortunately, tetrahedral or square planar because there's four ligands. So in this case, you don't know. And that's why I told you diamagnetic. That's going to give us the clue. We also know that it's CN. And if you got out your spectral chemical series on the back page, you say CN is a strong field ligand. So we're explaining deltas to be large in all cases. So. Um, Here's the tetrahedral, and the square planar Oh, I also, before I continue, I also need to know the charge on iron. I gave it to you when I named it. Uh, it's 3 plus. Does anybody need me to, like, write that out? Uh, I will if you need me to. Yeah? If it's 3 plus, how come it's not in English? Uh, oh, if, so the, the question is, why is it made in English? I said ferrate at the end. It's not if the metal's a plus, because metal's always a positive charge. So it's if this, yeah, in brackets, is negative. And it is. This is plus one, and this is minus one, this whole thing. So it's FeCN4 minus. That, then you name it in Latin, if possible, with the eight ending. Okay, uh, so I also need iron 3 plus. Iron is in the 8th column. So since it's in the 8th column, 8 minus 3 is 5 electrons. Uh, or uh, D5. Oh, oh, there's something I didn't copyright. There's a 2 here. Shoot, I just saw it. <laughs> There's two. I thought five electrons, that sounds weird. There's a two here. What does that mean? So I named it, I have to rename it now. This is the sodium hexacyano ferrate, what charge? Yeah, two plus. Does anybody need me to write that out? Why is it hexacyano? Oh, tetracyano. Yes. Got too excited. Okay. All right, uh, so two plus, two plus, let's do this again. It's in the eighth column, eight minus two, so it's whole six electrons. My, uh, some people do, along with me, this notation of just D6 to show how many electrons I'm gonna write out. So D6 means six electrons we're messing around with. So in this case, that would be one, two, I remember, <coughs> here's delta and it's large. I haven't drawn the other diagram yet. One, two, since delta is large, the next one's going to go down. Uh, three, and then four, five, uh, and six. So this is not <coughs> diamagnetic. This is paramagnetic. And so I'm going to cross this one out. This can't be the correct answer. So it better be square planar or I'm really messed up. Okay, square planar. Oh, yeah. I just had a quick question. Like, if we have a question like this on the test, yeah. do you want us to label like uh, dx squared minus y? That's a great idea. dx squared minus y squared. This is the dz squared. This is the, well, this one you wouldn't have to draw, yeah. so I'm wasting chalk right now. But the dxy, the dxz, and the dyz. Yeah. So we always have to. On the test, label everything. Yeah. Sometimes I've done examples where I haven't labeled it just for the exercise, but if you're on the test, you want to label everything. I draw the, this axis with the E. I write out the word square planar. Every possible thing, you want to make sure not to get docked for points. Okay, the square planar. Uh, let's see, which one is that one? That's the one I believe that looks like the Eiffel Tower. So the square planar, that's in the XY axis. So you've got the dx squared minus y squared. 
you've got the d x y x y you got the d z squared and then you've got the two that are kind of in the axis the d x z and the d y z I have a question yeah why is d z squared higher than d x z because isn't d z squared on the z these two can flip so i'm not too depending on what the compound is so i'm not too particular about those but you're right, this has a very small donut, but the donut just happens, it happens to be really tiny, that goes around what looks like a P orbital. And so that has a component in the X, Y plane. And this one does too, it has big lobes, but they're off axis. So you wouldn't be able to determine those two, you can just write them down, that's fine. Okay, and we have delta here, and it's very large also. So watch this, one, Two, there's the first two. Now, if delta's large, I don't want to go up to the next level yet. So three, four. Now, number five is up at the next level, five. And then six is at the same level. So that one's diamagnetic. Uh, everything's paired, so this has to be square planar. If I wrote both, I want to make sure and circle the correct answer. Yes? Yeah. When would you have to draw the Lewis structure to determine which one it would be? You do not have to draw the Lewis structure ever to determine what it would be. Yeah. So we're going to do Lewis structure, but it's going to be in the main group unit. Um, you can draw those sort of structures here, but it's beyond the scope of our class. You can take uh, inorganic chem with the grad students, and they'll show you how to draw. It'll be lots of fun, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, you have a question. Yeah. Yeah, how do I find it was D6? Well, iron is in the eighth column on your periodic table. It's 2 plus, I accidentally wrote it incorrectly the first time, I didn't see that subscript 2. But it's actually 2 plus a ferrous, and so yeah, 8 minus 2. That's how I got 6. So it loses both the S electrons. Really, you would write 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 3D6. 